Yes, Chanel. Uh, thanks, Gary. On the CDC, on the movement of data going straight from CDC to HHS now, um, understanding that HHS needs access to real-time data, uh, was there also any concern whatsoever undergirding this decision regarding CDC's uh, possible manipulation of data. There were some reports coming out of Florida. Certain states were coming out and saying mid-level CDC um, reports were not necessarily uh, accurate. And so was that, did that have any effect in this decision to send data straight to HHS? No, the intent for uh, this decision, and I talked extensively today with Dr. Burks, um, with Secretary Azar, um, and with Dr. Redfield about this. Um, the intent of this is we need to make sure that there is daily data that is being given to Dr. Burks and others who are running point on a lot of our actions with remdesivir and identifying hotspots. Uh, and I would point out, and I just want to explain this because I think there's been some confusion in the press, uh, that there are two methods of data collection. The one is the National Healthcare safety network and this is a CDC system uh, and this is where hospitals voluntarily report their data and about 81 percent of hospitals were reporting their data so we don't need 81 percent of hospitals reporting data we need 100 percent of hospitals reporting data because it is critical that Dr. Burks and others receive uh, the daily admissions ICU use and PPE numbers and um, when you're only getting 81 percent of hospital data that means you've got 19 percent of hospitals that were unaware of their needs. So what happened is we also have a second method of, of using, of tracking this data, and it's the teletracker database, and this is an HHS system. And this was initially used for purposes of provider relief funding, and we asked hospitals to tell us about their COVID admissions so that we could identify possible hotspots. And as it turns out, this data uh, ended up being more complete, more up-to-date with information. And so um, ensuring that hospitals are reporting into this system where we're getting more complete data uh, was the reason that HHS um, has had this transition where they've asked hospitals to transition reporting to the teletractor, teletracker system. Um, it's important, especially with remdesivir distribution, that we know exactly where the needs are so we can surge them. So uh, this have access to this data. Yes, that's right. So um, I, I did confirm that with Dr. Redfield that this is completely open source data available to the CDC. Uh, Secretary Azar says we insist that they use it um, and no one, and, and Dr. Redfield confirmed this, no one is taking access or data away from the CDC and that data is routinely published so that the American people are fully informed. Yes. Um, so I wanted to follow on that briefly. Uh, there's been some complaints particularly among um, independent modelers who are using the CDC data that was updated daily to sort of put out their public models, some of which the White House mm -hmm. has relied on, that now those dashboards have been taken down. So I'm wondering if uh, the administration would sort of commit to making the broader database a bit more available to the public. The CDC database um, is the public data that's been out there. Uh, it'll continue to be public. It should be public. Um, and this is all about getting more data out there, uh, not less data, and ensuring in, in particular that our doctors get that daily data. And, um, and one thing that I'd also like to point out for everyone um, is just with regard to testing, we've done more than 42 million tests, as I noted. The second highest number is 12 million from India. Uh, we're leading the world in testing. And it's a very stark contrast, and the president mentioned this yesterday, so I just wanted to um, put some, uh, some additional information out there. It was actually CBS reporting that in 2009, under Obama-Biden quotes, and this is CBS reporting, CDC abruptly advised states to stop testing for H1N1 flu and stop counting individual cases. So while this president surged testing under the Obama administration, they stopped testing entirely. Uh, and Ron Klain, Vice President Biden's former chief of staff, said this, it is purely a fortuity that H1N1 isn't one of the great mass casualty events in American history. It had nothing to do with us doing anything right. This is former VP Biden's chief of staff. It just had to do with luck. Uh, contrary to that, this president led the world in testing, led the world in ventilators, redistributing ventilators for therapeutics, 13 vaccine candidates, one going into phase three clinical trial. This response has been extraordinary and historic. We didn't pause testing, the Obama-Biden administration did, and that was a shameful decision. Thank you.